make a quick decision and Im improvise and change on the fly and do that consciously, but to do it unconsciously. And now, speaking of consciously versus unconsciously, we've got Isaiah here back again from round one all the way in winner semis versus Yash, a Pokemon trainer from originally from California here in Midwest, I believe for school, uh, who has just really do, been doing well in the region and now right here in winter semifinals to bring the to run it back versus the Pac-Man. All right, well this should be a good one. Young Yash. Gonna be one of a few Pokemon trainers we've seen on the screen today. Going up against Isaiah, who, I mean, the last time we got to have the pleasure of watching them play against, I believe it was Mr. Dojo San. <laughs> and that was a bit tougher. Um, but hopefully, you know, Yash has a bit more of a competitive time. I mean, so far, you know, really leaning heavily into the Razor Leaf, right? And I get it. <laughs> you don't want to deal with that Pac-Man at a distance sometimes. And, and, but not only does Razor Leaf lock them out from a distance, right? But we saw, right? It goes. It's one of those projectiles that can pass, kind of phase its way through Hydrant. So it keeps Pac-Man from sending that Hydrant, that projectile, at you. And it locks out his defensive play as well, not just creates the space. Yeah, and it's one of those projectiles that people often, like, don't really remember, but it can be angry. And so, like, if you're just kind of being like, oh, they're razor leafing and assuming it's going to be in the same place every time they do it, you can find yourself getting clipped by it because it does have an arc that you can control very slightly, but it is there. Yes, sir. That difference between smash input, tilt input, right? Kind of stealth show, adding stealth depth to so yes. many range projectile moves and range buttons in this game. That time, though, no depth needed. It's just going to be a hydrant falling onto your head, and it doesn't matter what Pokemon type you are, but... I can't imagine that's fun for Charizard. Yeah, no, very Looney Tunes-esque in the way that that stock got taken. It, you know, fire hydrants are meant to put out fires, and I guess fire types, but not like that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's creative solutions, you know? <laughs> creative solutions. I I'm all here for it. Granted, we do have the Ivysaur back here and some Galaxia combos as well, but kind of falls out of that down air a little bit, gives an opportunity for Yash to kind of get a little bit of aggression started, but you're going back to the Razor Leafs. And I'm with it. Hey, nickel and dime them if you got it. And that's like that's one of Pac-Man's specialties. Yes, they can find those big long Galaga combos, fair strings, and push you off the stage, push you into the DI read and make you explode. But Pac-Man also, as you mentioned, right, that nickel, that, that nickel and dime, just the single hit to just chip away at you to make it work. Ivysaur though, very capable of the same thing, finding these razor leaves and now a huge potential at lead trap. Yeah, that down throw vibe left gave a little bit of a swing of momentum here, but now that we're in 130, we're like, ah, I'm feeling a little bit scared for my life. I'm going to swap to a heavier boy in that Charizard, but if you get hit by the high, uh, the, the bell, honestly, you know, that was a little bit easier because you got hit in the air, right? So that forced Pac-Man to use an aerial to try to KO there. Had it been a smash attack, you would not have been able to survive. And that was huge from that Flare Blitz to just keep going with the trample property, right? That it clanged and then kept going off the down smack, but in that happening meant that it it put Pac-Man into hit lag and so there was no punish able to be found on that with Flare Blitz. So he was just defensive kind of cover up from Yash to hold on for at least a little bit. But now just again still scrambling to close that stock out. And even at 33, that's why we're seeing this stay on the Charizard. Yeah, you really want to close stock out early. We'll see. Up Smash is very good at doing that has been one of Charizard's best options since day one of this game dropping. And for good reason, we saw into full effect there. But look at this, Galaxia combo. I like the swap over to Charizard. You get the iframes on that for like the first 20 frames or so or something of that swap. So that really does help you out quite a bit. But And that Galaxian was just a little slow. It is interesting to look for too, because knowing you have that frame one escape option, and that is actually a DI read off the side special. It's not actually true for Pac-Man there. So there was an escape route just a little bit later regardless. Now though, Yash still just stuck onto this Charizard because you are at that kill percent and PS2 plus Charizard will help you survive. But with the play, when you're playing the straight hit game against Pac-Man as Charizard, Ooh. it's not in your favor. Yeah, and you can see right here, like, wants to keep Pac-Man in the corner, tries to go for a back air, it's not gonna connect, and then gets punished by a down air as well. Trying to find something here. You need, like, at least one more hit here as Charizard. Oh, got keyed. Yeah, my yeah. friend, the key to victory, the key to game one coming in and locking it up. 
Isaiah did a great job controlling the pace of that game Ooh. and setting up for that interaction as well because as we saw there just before that stock got taken, right? I get that Charizard got forced to platform because of that laning pressure we were talking yes. about before. And so even though it doesn't lock down all your options, it forces you to platform and your options are then either drop down and get hit, go back to ledge, which is good for Pac-Man, or jump away. And the jump away is what then gets you get, as Pac-Man, you get to set up and lock in another situation where then key is the answer to that laning. And it was a beautiful set of conditioning, and now it's something that Yasha's gonna have to find an answer to, again taking Pac-Man back to Hollow Bastion. Okay, let's see if this counter pick is going to be the one. We've seen this happen once already, and it wasn't great. It actually kind of started out just like this, where it's like, all right, Pac-Man gains control of the stage and then forces the opponent into the corner for the entirety of the time. How do you get out of here if you're Yash? You try to roll in, you get caught by a grab, and then once again, we're going to set up. Force to the corner, reset the ledge trap. Ooh, gets a chomp, and that's going to be the stock. 2.5% is all that we take for that. And that's a DI read that people don't talk enough about how consistent it is because of how long you're in that bell stun, right? Very easy to adjust to that DI line and lock it down. So great early stock from Isaiah to do really the same thing we saw in round one, right? Versus versus Dojo. Dojo, right? yeah. You just are getting locked down because you didn't win the first neutral interaction on Hollow Bastion. Right. That center flat, man, it's crazy. It's the same thing. Hollow Bastion, similar situation happens on Smashville as well, Absolutely. right? Where it's just like, you really, it, it's hard. If they have control of that center plat, that's going to be <laughs> all she wrote. He got, he got him with it twice. Oh, man. That's something you normally see once a set, not twice in two stocks, and that mental damage has to be inflicting on Yash, because even if you don't play Pac-Man often, you know that that is not something they find regularly. Yeah, no, it's uh, looking a bit tough here. Everyone's set against Isaiah has kind of seemed to go this way. The Hollow Bastion counter picks not doing them any favors. We have the swap over to Charizard here. We have three stocks to get through. The fly out of shield isn't going to connect. Yash is looking for anything here. And you can feel the desperation settling in. And now that bell oh, getting reset with that recharge here. Able to have two throws again. The up smash gonna pick it up. As you mentioned before, just such a fast and strong ground to air option from Charizard, but the bell, a great one of its Ooh. own, looking for the Z-drop, not gonna be set it though, see. and just trying to find a trap, but it just didn't work out there. Yeah, had a bit of a cheeky setup there, couldn't get it to execute, which gives a bit of an opportunity for Yash to swing back. He goes for the reverse nair, maybe wanted that cheeky early back air KO that sometimes you can see Charizard get off that setup, but maybe a little bit too low in the percents. Uh, I like the just job reset pressure, right? Put Pac-Man in the corner, Whoa. take away the stage, at least get him out from under the platform. But was it a high enough upside play? Has yet to be seen, because still Yash, right, not able to keep those feet on the ground at all. Not able to keep the flexibility. And there you're what just a too high a percentage. Look for a flare blitz. That being said, back to back air. Yeah, got the tipper on that tail as well, racking it up. But one hit from this bell and the set is over. And I think Yash knows that. Has to be extremely careful, biding some time, being patient about getting out the corner. You don't want to give it up for free. Being said, my friend, right? Charizard very much one of the king, one of the Ooh. kings of cheese. An, an up falling Hold up on. air string in an up smash. We might be looking for a neutral air. You missed that tech. Ah. It, it's a flare blitz to death time. I'm and Yash very aware that you have so many ways to end this game as Charizard. You just oh. have to find it. Back throw, just barely gonna not do it yet. But the options oh. are running out and there it is, Flambo. All right, time is running hot here as Yash is trying to close one out. 206% on this Charizard, narrowly avoids the back air. He's trying to flare blitz it again, bets it all, but it was way too obvious. And we're not gonna allow that one to happen. Isaiah is able to close that set out with a back air as I respect it. I respect it. Me I too. understand why Yash would go for it. I think, personally, it was a little bit too obvious. Even that Flare Blitz they went for before was kind of like, it felt like you got one. You know what I mean? It felt like you got one, and if you were going to go for it again, you needed a setup, but going for it raw like that is like the kind of bad idea that makes it good in situations like that often. Yeah, and we, we see so many players who lean on the Charizard to the level that we saw Yash do right in this set. 
kind of fall into that trap with Flare Blitz because who doesn't want to hit Flare yes. Blitz, right? Yes. And that's one of the issues kind of with some of that those height moves in Ultimate is what do you do with the Discipline? And even then, like, based on Pac-Man's positioning, I understand the idea, right? Because Flare Blitz, there, they're under platform, so you're like, okay, they might try and jump to platform and call it something high, and if they do that, I go underneath them. And also, you know, if they don't immediately react, well, I just go back to ledge, right? I bounce off their shield, I go back to ledge, or I go back, act, and I have some space to work with, but you just didn't account for how much end lag you had. And, oh boy, Flambo, because I think you got a crowd favorite coming back to the oh, stage. Oh, you don't say. Yeah, I think you are damn right. We're gonna have Skitty Bitty Blockenheimer returning to bat here up against Eric Dole. And while we've seen Blockenheimer here on screen, we have not yet seen Eric, though, yet another player from Wisconsin, right, showing up in droves. And while we've seen number one in Wisconsin, we've seen number four in Wisconsin, well, we're still missing number two, but how about number three for your viewing pleasure yes. here in Winter Semis? Eric, though, oh, 